hyperrealistic portraits do take an immense amount of time to do, and this is mainly down to the level of detail that is put into them. This is also why I haven't released a video for a while, because as you probably noticed if you watched the previous parts, you'll see that the picture has progressed on significantly since the last video. So what I'll do is I'll show you how I got to this stage, and I'll also go through the materials that I've used to create it. I have also put links in the description below to any of these, and if you do purchase anything from this, this is greatly appreciated as I do get a small commission from this. So with all that said, let's get into the video. The first thing that I want to do is to add this whisker in here, but I just need to cover this area of the picture over just to protect it. So to do this, I'm gonna put a sheet of glassine paper over the top. So I'll attach that to the board and then I can get underway. So what is glassine? Well, it's an acid-free pH neutral paper. It resists grease and moisture. And also as well, it won't smudge graphite, charcoal or pastel. This is much better than say laying a piece of paper over the surface that can pick these things up and spread them around. To draw the whisker in, I'm gonna use my Cressicolor 9H pencil. This is used sharp as I want to indent two lines either side of the whisker. And then the whisker will basically be the bit in between. A small torch can also be used to make the indentations easier to see. So the other thing that this pencil can be used for is to add in things such as the finer hairs that there are around the picture. By using the 9H through the darker tones that are around the edge, this pulls the tone, producing the very fine dark hairs. Not many companies actually make 9H pencils, and sometimes the leads do tend to be quite brittle but I can't say I've ever actually found that with the Creta Color. For the thicker hairs around the edge, I can also use my Caran Dash 4H. Again, this is used sharp, and it does produce a slightly thicker, darker line. This can also be used to pull other tones, and if used lightly, can produce a very fine, faint line. Both of these pencils can be quite difficult to sharpen. So just to finish the tip, I usually use a small file and do this by hand. So I now want to start to indent some texture onto the muzzle area. And to do this, I'm gonna use two darts. One is for the finer hairs and the other for the thicker. These are only cheap steel darts and I just reshape the tips with a file. Now, I would say these are much more substantial than say something like an embossing tool. So once I've got a bit of texture indented into the paper, I can then work back over the top of this using my Caran Dash 2B and 4B pencils. Because the indentations are made using a relatively short stroke, the pencil is applied over the top the same way, and this will reveal a relatively subtle texture. I use the 2B and 4B because I find that these pencils give me a good variation between the depth of tones that I want to create. This technique is quite methodical, and you only really want to work in small areas at a time because you are effectively drawing in every single hair. So I've already put some of the finer texture into this area, but there are some coarser hairs there as well. So to add these in, I'm just gonna use the thicker of the two darts and I can just go in and apply these back over the top. When using this type of technique, paper choice can be quite critical, particularly if you consider that this is quite an aggressive way to work into the paper. For example, if you were to use this technique on, say, something like cartridge paper, it wouldn't take long before you'll start tearing holes into it. When it comes to choosing a paper, I would always recommend that it wants to be 100% cotton and around about 300 gram plus. Also as well, it wants to have a hot press finish to it as you want a relatively smooth surface. The two papers that I currently use are St. Cuthbert Saunders Waterford and also Arches Acrowell, which is what this picture is being produced on. Now, although the two papers are very similar in spec, there are, however, slight differences between them. For example, the St. Cuthbert's does indent very easily and with a minimal amount of pressure. But if you really do start to overwork it, the surface can start to feather up. The Arches, on the other hand, is incredibly tough and it does take a lot of punishment but you do have to apply a lot of pressure to indent into the surface, and these marks can be quite difficult to see, but you do get a very nice result. Both of these papers do work very well, and they also allow you to build very nice dark tones, 
So at the end of the day, it's purely down to personal choice. So I'm really happy with how the pitch is developing and I'm now ready to go back in and start to do a little bit more work to his nose. Now, the grain of the paper will actually help me here because I can use that to create the effect of the skin texture. This is done by just using the blunt 2B and 4B pencils in a tight circular pattern. And this will effectively just create that very subtle skin texture. If any areas need to be darkened, then this can just simply be done by applying more layers. To re-establish any highlights or draw any tone back out, I just use a kneadable eraser with a point rolled on the end of it. The one that I'm using is by Karen Dash and they are quite difficult to find. But what I would recommend instead is using a Factus K20. I've got to say I can't really notice any difference between the two. The Factus is half the price and they are also much easier to get hold of. I just want to add a little bit of fine detail to the nose, so to do this I'm going to use a sharp F pencil. I use this one because again it's relatively hard and it will hold a sharp point. I just want to make some of these highlights on the nose just that little bit sharper. So what I'm going to do is use my electric eraser to do this. And I'm also going to use this just to tidy up and clean up this whisker just a little bit. The one that I'm using is USB rechargeable. And it also comes with really fine tips, so it's great for the type of detailed work that I do. You can also get these in a replaceable battery version as well. These are great for producing a much more prominent, hard-edged highlight. Compared to something like the Needable Eraser, that produces a much more softer appearance. Also, these can be used very precisely to remove any areas of unwanted graphite, like I'm doing in this whisker. The edge of the whisker just needs to be tidied up a little further, so to do this I just use a sharp F pencil. To help give the whisker more shape, tone is applied to either ends of it by using a blending stump. When doing this, this can diminish some of the surrounding tone. So this can just simply be re-established by using either the 2B or 4B pencils. Moving on to the whiskers on the other side of the face, these are drawn in using a sharp 4H pencil. These are again indented into the paper. And by using the pencil through the darker tone on the edge of the face, the pencil will effectively pick this tone up and carry it, with the tone diminishing towards the tip of the whisker, creating a more tapered appearance. If more shape is required, then the kneadable eraser can be used to just work back into the whisker to soften the tip. So with this much of the picture done, I can now start to go back in using a 9B pencil to apply some of the very darkest tones. The Caran Dash 9B is very dark and also adheres to the paper very well. But there is a downside to this, and that is that if you want to soften the edge and blend it out, this is very difficult to do, and something like a blending stump doesn't really have much effect on it. So the best way that I've found to do this is to actually use either a 2B or 4B pencil over the edge and then this will create a smoother transition. Some of the texture on the face looks a little bit too harsh. So before applying any 9B over the top of this, I first want to use the blending stump to brush some tone down into the texture as this will help to create a softer appearance. Blending stumps are basically rolled up paper and you can get various different types of these, but the ones that I find that work the best have a very soft velvety texture to them. Also I find they work the best as they get older and become more saturated with graphite. Because of the amount of work that's been done with the other grades of pencils, the 9B only makes a very subtle difference. So now I've got the darkest tones established in the face, I've now got a sense of how the overall finished picture will look. And now I can move on to working on putting more of the fur texture into the body. Texture and tone are again applied, with the thicker of the two darts being used for the more coarser, more prominent areas of fur, and the finer dart being used for anything that needs to be more subtle, as well as any of the more distant elements. Some of the shadow areas are also applied. Now this will help later on as the picture develops, when I start to create the area that he is laying on. Incidentally, instead of carpet, he's actually going to be laying on either, say, rock or stone, 
as this will give a much more dramatic look to the overall finished picture. So now I've got the body and paws drawn in, I can just go back in and as I did with the face, just make some subtle tonal changes to these areas. At this point I find it's a good idea to view the picture from a distance, as I can then make a decision on where I actually need to either increase or decrease the level of tones that there are within it. Other elements like say, for example, random hairs can now also be added. These can just simply be cleaned out with an electric eraser and then just re-indented, even though this is working through a previous texture. Again, things like this are only very subtle, and they don't want to be made to stand out too much. If you've made it this far into the video, then please remember to like, comment, subscribe, or if you have any questions then please feel free to ask them. This really does make a huge difference to a small channel like this. Now some of the other materials that I use when creating a picture are for the initial drawing I'll always use a blunt H pencil. Also as well nowadays I tend to use a graphite powder as well and this is generally used for either loading blending stumps with tone or applied directly to the paper using say makeup pads, sponges or even brushes as well. The inside of the ears are quite a complicated area because you have a number of different textures. You have the finer, shorter hairs, as well as the longer, coarser ones, and also skin texture to deal with as well. So they pretty much require most of the techniques that have been used in creating the rest of the picture. Of course, the important thing is to not rush and to always take the time to get it right. So I'm really pleased with how the picture's looking but inevitably there are bound to still be some slight subtle changes which need to be made. Anyway, if you do have any questions, please remember, feel free to ask, I'm always glad to answer. In the next video, I can now start to add in some of the background elements. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.